Welcome to the Cherry Room Podcast with me, Rachel Burridge. And me, Simon Burridge. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, we're ready to go. So you go up to that camera as near as you want. And yeah, I need to do the, you just clap that board for me like this. Yeah. I'll do it harder than that. You got That's it, that would be a bit. I did all the audio. Slide all the audio up, okay. Right, you're the first. You're the first one, Mike. This is Mike Harper. What a privilege. First one. Do you feel really uh, excited about it? You haven't got a clue what's going on either of you. Not a clue. Okay, so Rachel's not here. Rachel's usually here. Um, well, I say she's usually here. We've only done one podcast, just me and her. So I've got rid of her. <laughs> she's at work. But um, So Mike is our first guest, and it's Mike Harper, Wealth Management. Is that That's right? me. That's me. Yeah. And how long have we known each other for now? For a year? Too long. Thanks for that, mate. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, no, three years. Been on golfing trips, haven't we? Here we are. Things like that. Yeah. All right, then, tell us about what you do. What do I do? I try. No, I, I look after people's money and help them achieve their financial goals, whatever that may be, in a sense of if they want to retire at 60 and let's say they're 40, put a plan in place to try and make that happen. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop you there. Sorry. Yeah. There's something really important to say to you. Yeah. That sign falls off the wall. Okay. And I need you to give me a rough idea when you think it's going to fall off the wall. Okay. Right? As in minutes-wise? <laughs> minutes-wise into this podcast. So how long we've been recording for. Yeah. All right. About, yeah. about five minutes' time? You reckon five minutes? Well, I don't know. Five, it's up to you. Right. So it lasted the whole podcast between me and Rach, and then as soon as I stopped recording, it fell off the wall. Okay. So now we're going to make a league up, and if you're the closest when it falls off the wall... Or do I either? I don't know yet. I think I'm going to give hundred pounds to charity. That does nothing for you, though, does not it? No. <laughs> so we'll have a think about what we're going to do. Hundred pounds to my charity. Yeah, your charity of your choice. There you go. That'd be good. Is that wallpaper, by the way? Uh, it is wallpaper. Yeah. Oh, it's not bad, is it? You, st- you, I've got a friend who's got another studio like mine, and he's got exactly the same wallpaper. I might. Um... Where'd you get it from? It was there. I... <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. That uh, is beautiful. I know I have a one. Should anyone that's going to watch this we get a point in one minute? Oh my god, that even had no double sided on it. That's really oh, good. So I think that behind. Oh, what I was going to say. I reckon you've won. Well, you've got to have won, surely. Well, if I'm the only one that does it, then definitely. Look at that. Perfect. Um, yeah, I know. I, I want you to let me know where that's from because we are redecorating our office. I think it's from um, the Orange Place. You know, what I, mean? like, you know what? I might have some spare for you. Thank you. Yeah, I only said the Orange Place because I can't remember it. No, there's nothing to do with like product <laughs> placement or other. What is it they say? All other. <laughs> we bought in all other yeah. all, um, <laughs> DIY stores. <laughs> <laughs> so well done oh. I think you may have 100 pounds of charity but I'll do it by the end of next year all depends on the pod- if the podcast don't last so then, I'm big at, well. then I've managed to dodge 100 quid <laughs> so, right so sorry so where, where, oh. where were we that was a really important bit that me and Rachel wanted to talk about but I was hoping yeah. it would last about half hour no, that was good that was that was timed quite well and we redid it as well because it yeah, had to together by tape just in the office they'll work it out just listening to me and Rachel on the first one they'll work out how, how well this is how well it's done. Right, sorry, mate. Start again. Start again. Where was I? No, I was just saying, um, obviously, what I do is help people achieve their financial goals, whatever that may be. Um, if It's being realistic with it. If someone wants to retire at 60 and, let's say, they're 35, 40, and they're saving 50 quid a month, then it's probably not realistic. But if you can understand what you've got, understand where you can get to and make a plan to get towards that, that's what I can help with and achieving that. Okay, right, okay. So um, I've been using you for three years, haven't I? Mm-hmm. And um, with high expectations. <laughs> and uh, then as soon as uh, that happened, well, we just come out of lockdown, hadn't we? I was going to blame lockdown for it. Yeah, but then we had obviously... And then we had a war, Ukraine, didn't we? Which, but and it's this, this is the sort of thing that if you look over a 20, 30, 40 year time period, which in theory that's what your investment time period is, Something that's happened over a one-year period doesn't really make any exactly, difference. Exactly, yeah. But also, things were cheaper. You've been quite smart, bought regularly, which then means right. it will go up quicker because it's 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 bought cheaper. So 
it's a long term investment. It's not something I, I'm not someone that will be able to make you a lot of money overnight. It is a long term investment, right? Strategy. So, do you have an ideal customer? Would you say? Um, yeah, I think if I'm looking for someone between forty and fifty that's looking to retire within the next 10 to 15 years, that's probably someone that I would say is ideal. Right. Um, because they're getting to the the later end of their working career and it can be a very interesting conversation if someone's got not a lot in pensions for argument's sake and they want to retire and it's like, well, actually, that's probably not realistic. It's always shocked me when I speak to mates and they're, and they're in like 40 and they're yeah. like, I haven't got a pension. Yeah. And it's, it's, I've uh, had one from nineteen, but I've been lucky. I've been working at the same place. Yeah, yeah. But also, you've got you've got to put the money away. Like that, nowadays, you can opt out of pensions, which seems great when you're younger because you can get extra money. But when you fast forward fifteen years and you're in your thirties and you think, well, I'll start now, then you've got to put in triple what you would have put in fifteen years ago. Mm. So mm. it's it's just that bit of education around what you can do with what you've got, and, and ultimately, it depends on someone's situation because some people can put in more than others it, it, it all depends right okay so um people investing with you why do you think that's best for you do you look after them do you contact i know you look after me and contact me but that's because i'm handsome and you just want to just want to look at me which is natural yeah i i think i i look after just over 200 clients um and it's not something that we market. Obviously, I'm not I'm doing this today, but I'm not seeing it as marketing. It's, it's. I don't do any of that. It's all word of mouth, and I'm asking people to give me their money to then grow it. So that requires a lot of trust, and not from your side because you just did it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm a bit <laughs> like that, and I. How much do you want from me? Yeah, yeah. I do that. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that you need to have trust, and I I generally just grow my business by people referring me that have used me over a period of time mm. um i don't go out there really actively looking for new business um apart from a networking group but apart from that i don't do anything else okay any fees involved but not to see me not to for me to give you any advice it's only if you say yes i want to go ahead with something but the fees vary depending on the product um okay. so it's 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 something we have a an annual management charge so when you look after your investments obviously there's a charge for that if you've got a pension every single pension has an annual management charge but it's anyway. not it's not something they actually bill you it just comes out of the investment it just comes out of the investment so is it a percentage of the investment yeah but then again that depends on the level of risk you want to take to the, the investments that you're in etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's it, it's hard when someone says what your charge is it's it's hard because I don't, I don't really know until we we get down the line so you know what they want to invest yeah um some have an upfront charge some don't so it's it's all dependent on what we do um but for me to see someone and continue seeing someone there's no charge for that you see these adverts about people transferring their pension over to some crook and then he's on holiday laughing or you hear them on the radio as well yeah. don't you um but i've tried to transfer my pension <laughs> with you <laughs> What, about three times uh, now? A long, yeah, it's been a while, isn't it, I'm trying to do that. And, but your company refuse it, which is yeah. a, it, which is a good thing because they're not, then I know straight away I'm not trying to yeah, we, be we, ripped off, you know. It's, it's putting the client first and we're only going to do it if it's right for you. Um, we have our own internal compliance that we have to get through and if it's a case of they don't think it's the right thing, no matter what I think, then we're not going to do it. Mm. Um so it's it's making sure that everything is aligned to get you in the best position that you possibly can. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's 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 protecting the clients. It's protecting me from the FCA. Um, so yeah, it's just it's all about protecting everyone. Right. Okay then. So who's the real Mike Harper? What got you? Because I you know I've I've been drunk with you a few times, Mike. I'm not going to lie. And you're pretty mental. I feel, <laughs> we filmed your wedding. Rachel shot your wedding. Yeah. Um, I filmed it. Rachel shot it. I shot it as well. Rachel took the photos. I filmed it. You were in a lot of fancy dress stuff afterwards, which was I thought was hilarious. We had a good laugh. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah. Had no feedback about pictures. Probably I, have had feedback. I enjoyed it until my father-in-law had a heart attack the next day. That's right. 
It's, it, that was a tough one, wasn't it? That was a, yeah. And yeah, that's it. Laugh straight after mentioning it. Well, I can laugh now because he's Is fine. he all right now? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, it was... So we, we were there on the Monday. Obviously, the Tuesday we got married. Photos are great, by the way. Thank you. We, Nothing we, to do with me, it's Rachel. We, but... Well, I love the video as well. Um, and Dick keeps getting on at me because obviously we've... I'm pretty sure we've ordered those albums and stuff, mm. but... We need to give you photos to put in there, and we haven't done that. And mate, the record's four years. Yeah, four years. I've had someone. I was like, I don't even remember filming yeah. your wedding. So if I've won that, then I can <clears> go <throat> for five years and win two things. Well, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, um, yeah. There, there's no prize for being that long. <laughs> it means the albums have gone up, and they're yeah. costing us more money to make. But, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got married on the Tuesday, and then a really good day. Couldn't really have gone any better. Um, Ferry House Inn, wasn't it? In, Ferry House Inn. In Sheppey. Yeah, Sheppey. Which is, you know, people get put off by Sheppey, but the Ferry House Inn's quite nice. You can be anywhere. There's something about Sheppey, though. People slag it off. Yeah. But when I drive through Sheppey, I feel like... Oh, not. Nice. I know. Yeah. But it's like one of those ones that when people say that, you know... The Ferry House, though, you're, you're driving down a four-mile road, which is bumpy as hell. Oh, yeah. But when you get to the end, you're on the river. Yeah. If it's a nice day, you could be anywhere. Yeah, it is um, nice. It is nice. I mean, yeah, they were really accommodating. It was great. And then, yeah, four o'clock the next morning, got a knock on the door saying, father-in-law's having a heart attack. And we were like, okay, this is uh, not what I was expecting. What time was you done now? So we went to bed midnight, half 12. Oh, right. Something like that. Well, I'm shocked by that. I thought you were going to say one, two, but do they stop it all? They stopped serving. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then I think I think what set him off was he had a skittle bomb before bed, uh, one of his last drinks, which is Red Bull and some other drink. And he'd, he's never had Red Bull in his life. Oh, uh, um, right. So that's. And the issue he had with his heart is it couldn't pump the blood around quick enough. So with the Red Bull making his heart go mental, it couldn't get the blood around. Big enough stroke, basically. Pretty much, yeah. So he then was suffering for the next few hours. He said he felt it during the conga, during the singing waiters. <laughs> uh, oh, right. Really? Yeah. But actually, when you look back on the video, you can see he's not 100%. He just didn't tell anyone. Um, oh, and we don't know it now because we're like, thank you for waiting until the next day because it would have been horrific if it had been on the yeah, yeah. end day. Of course. Um, but yeah, so... The thing is, I've not met him before. I don't think... I never. Well, I was never invited to the stag do. Uh, we can talk about that later <laughs> off camera. I've been to golf trips with you, but he doesn't golf, does he? I've not met him, have I, before? I've not met your father in law before. No. No. I mean, I've you know, I've come on to Vic a few times, but you know. <laughs> but I've not met your father in law. Um so I can't tell you if he looked gradually better. He's the day when doesn't I... like um <clears throat> Cal- I've arrived, I've arrived to say I, I did his speech for him because he's he's not, he doesn't like doing that public speech. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So he was nervous about the day anyway. Mm. Obviously it's his daughter. Um, so he was obviously higher, ha- had higher anxiety anyway. Yeah. But then as the day went on, and with what we were doing, um, it just took a toll, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is someone that was doing four to five miles of walking every day. Oh, so right. it's something that it's quite surprising didn't happen sooner. Um, yeah. Uh, one of those things where it just happened the day after the wedding. But too high, man. Yeah, he went to Medway straight up to Kings. He was up for Kings for the next six weeks, had two major operations. Now he's all right. So who called the ambulance to come to the ferry house? Or They came to the ferry house. Um, so Vic's mum obviously knew what was going on. She knocked on our door. I don't think she would called the ambulance at that point. She may have done, I can't really remember. Um, and then, because where the ferry house is, it took like 45 minutes for the yeah. ambulance to get there. Yeah, I imagine there's an ambulance on... Is there an hospital there, on... There's Chepe. There's a little one, and there's a hamlet station there, mm. but for whatever reason, it took 45 minutes. All right, okay. They did all their checks and said that it's not right, got to go to the hospital. Probably removed all the drunks out of the ambulance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a Tuesday night. It's a yeah. Tuesday night, but it's still in Sheffield, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. So we removed all the drunks. And out. then, um, so we went over to Midway, and actually later that day, we had to take Alfie to Midway because his leg had swollen up because he'd been bitten. And all, I know all we needed was um, antibiotics. But it was uh, it was after five o'clock. We couldn't get any anywhere, so it was like, all right, we're taking some bike. He was up there for six hours. That was joy. Um, now I remember shooting the ferry house, and there being a wasp nest there. That I don't think it was that day. I think it might have been a different wedding. No, but I think 
because we went there on the Monday night, and obviously it's by the river, and there was yeah, some there's somewhere everything there's comes out, there's loads don't it? of mosquitoes yeah. and stuff. So I think, well, he just got bitten because he was scratching it, got infected. Um, but yeah, he's and then yeah, six weeks up at well, I think it was six weeks, four to six weeks up at Kings, um, two big operations, and then he got released on the Friday, and on the Sunday he came to watch Alfie play football. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah, because he, 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 they basically told him that you can do. You can do stuff, just don't overexert yourself. Like, you can't go for big walks and stuff. But because he was just sat in a car and then on the side of the pitch, he was... Be all right, yeah. Yeah, it's six-year-old football, so it's not like he's uh, right. getting too intense. So, what are they doing with him now? Um medication. turning into a podcast about your... Uh, it is. Yeah. self. Um, just medication. <laughs> um, he's back driving now. Um, and he's he's got other things he's got to get sorted. But, yeah, it's just checkups and stuff. So, now nah, good, good. Right then, where was you born? I was born in Red Hill in Surrey. Was ya? I was. I used to knock around that sort of area. Did you? Mm. I don't know it. I don't lie. I lived there for. That's where the that's where the plum in the throat comes from. Then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I lived there for two years, so I don't remember it, and then moved down here. Did ya? Mm. Oh, blimey. But not here. I, I moved to a little village called Platsea in between Maystone and Ashford, which is much nicer than here. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so who, who was you there with your mum? Because your mum and dad uh, separated, aren't they? Yeah, they are now. Um, mum and dad, I don't know what age I was. Must have been around 10, something like that. Um, and then stayed there in between see houses. My dad was up here in Strood, lovely place. Um, and then, yeah, just ended up drifting towards Midway. You give it the old strewed, lovely place, right? But I've been around. I've been to places like... There's worse places. I've been to Westrum. I lived in Northfleet. Northfleet's all right. Everywhere has its dump. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm really happy in Strood. I know I'm Strood slash Higham. Yeah. So I'm up the top area. You're in, you're in a nice area. <laughs> yeah. But, but my, everywhere has its dumps. So my family come from Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, Rotherham. And so when we used to go back up there... Now that is a dump. <laughs> I apologise if you're over, but that is a dump. But uh, it's like my theory on when you go north, the further north you get, the further back in time it goes. Yeah, it's just very old school. Up yeah, there. and that's your dad, is it? Is both of them? Yeah, your mum and your dad. Yeah, are they really? Yeah. Never knew that. I know. I've, I'm not really spoken to your mum, but I know your dad's got a bit of an accent on him. My well, mum, I don't. I don't think my dad's got an accent, but other people. Oh, he definitely has. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So then you moved to Strood with your dad, or it's split between the houses. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then, what got you into this really interesting job of yours of dealing with people's money and not your own? Sure. Yeah. Um, I was unemployed when I was eighteen, and my brother was working for RBS at the time. Right. And there was a job came up. I went for that. I didn't really want it, but it was just a job at the time. I was in at NatWest for ten years. Um, doing various different so your first job was there um but uh, proper yeah. Job. yeah first right. proper job um i was there for 10 years and about five or six years in my dad does financial advice and he was saying why don't you come and do this and he got to do loads of exams so while i was on that west i was doing all the exams in the background and then came over four years ago um and yeah it's probably the best thing i've done from a flexibility point of view because I'm now self-employed whereas I was employed before working Monday to Saturday whereas now I can work whatever hours I want to work mm. obviously it's got to be around the clients but then at the same time it's around me because I do my school runs in the morning and afternoon well it's a Wednesday at 10 and you're sitting on your ass having coffee so there you go there you go perfect isn't it yeah, I looked at you and I thought that's what I want to do so when you were a kid what did you want to do I think it was football if I, it was sport, wasn't it? It I was sport, but I actually wanted to be a policeman and then a fireman. Um, so if you look at my medical records, um, I know I've got asthma, but it's not on my medical records, so I have trouble getting a blue pump if I need one. I have exactly the same problem. Um, because I wanted to be a fireman, we didn't put it on the medical records. Ah, uh, right. Um, so I went to college when I was 16, I think I wasn't clever enough to get into sixth form, um, and did public services, which... In hindsight, was the biggest waste of two years of my life because all I did was play football for two years. Right, um, but it was it was a 
fun time, but I'd rather have gone to work at 16 minutes. I've heard from other sources you were quite a main goalkeeper. What? I did all right. I've heard you were a really good goalkeeper. Yeah, well, I, to be fair, I... Nobody knows. Like, you turn your nose sideways. <laughs> That's the whole side of a, the goal covered. <laughs> I, I never really pursued it. I, I got offered <laughs> Jettingham trials when I was about 11, never went. Um, I was playing football six days a week. I played a little bit of Kent League, but I never really pursued it. Did you play with Solly, Chris Solly, for a bit? No. So, oh, right, someone... I don't know, it must have been Daniel no. mentioned something about Chris Solly. No, I... I I had a goalkeeper coach for a bit trying to make it, but it was weighing up football or work and there was no guarantee with football and it was taking up a lot of time and I was in my early 20s at the time and just, yeah, stopped that. Then I had kids and then just stopped playing football together. Mm. So now I just play golf. Um, but yeah, I, I miss football. I, I've, I coach Alfie's football team um, and I... Every time, every weekend, I just want to play football, but mm. time doesn't allow that. So. Mm. so you don't play yourself anymore? Don't play mm. anything. I, the only time I play is on a Saturday or Sunday with um, the, the team a little bit during training, but that is it. You know I can get you to, uh, in a match with some celebrities, Chari oh. charity football match. If you sponsor the charity football match, <laughs> I'll be interested. You'll be able to get on the pitch. Yeah, I'll be Dan, interested. Dan's done it from Urban Rollers. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'll be interested. Ricky Groves on the mic. Nice. And, uh, yeah, like, um, what was the one in EastEnders? The little geezer in EastEnders. Uh, can't remember his name now. I ain't going to remember his name, but there was a couple of EastEnders people, loads of YouTubers who ain't got a clue who they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, some Love Island people. Oh, nice. And then you get a, you get time on the pitch. What pitch are we talking about? This one was Brentwood FC. Oh, nice. But you know what? He's only got, um, it's got West Ham. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's what I've been told. Nice. Yeah, I'll be interested. Uh, so, but I, I miss football. I like, I like, I watch football every time I saw it. I watch it, but I, yeah, I um, bless him. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, I miss it. I, but then now, Alfie's old enough to play golf, so we we play a lot of golf. So, mm. right now, if I took my son to play golf, if I took any of my, I've got four sons. If I took any of them to play golf. Well, I can't really vouch for two of them, but how do you get a kid into something so focused into something? My kids are like, if I can't do it after the first 10 swings, mm. that's it. I better not. I think we, uh, I think with lockdown, we were quite lucky in a sense of we had all of that time and not really a lot going on. Um, and you were allowed out for an hour a day. So we just went over to the local park and he was, my son was three at the time um, I used swinging clubs before that but it was just nice just to play mm. um, for an hour and we actually taked him into a video with Nick Faldo and he replied to it during lockdown which was pretty cool really um, yeah it's on it's on Twitter or oh, X now um, but yeah there's a video of my son hitting a golf ball that Nick Faldo replied to no oh, wicked quite cool that's good um, but yeah like my son he's very sporty I was making him kick a football before he could walk um, just because I want him to get into sport. Mm. My daughter's the same. She she does ballet on a weekend, but I'm trying to find her a football team that will do it around that, which is quite difficult to think. Mm. She loves playing football. See, my um, seven-year-old's just started football and he's well behind, mm. but two years behind. Mm. But it's funny watching him because he hasn't got a clue what's going on. Yeah. They were, like he's tackling anyone. Yeah, yeah, I think it's hilarious. But I remember when my first son had um, my first son used to go to football, and he was all right. He was into it. He was into it. But then, then you get these other kids that aren't. And I remember the old manager pulling his hair out. They're having a five-a-side match, and there's these two kids defending, and one's going like that, and the other one's going like, and the the, the other team's going past them and scoring goals, and they're still just doing this. Yeah. And the managers run on the pitch. Said, "What are you doing?" He went. Well, he's packing the flowers, and I'm 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 stacking them into the lorry. <laughs> oh, and dude. then you get the old swarm of bees, yeah, thing, yeah. yeah, where they're all just gathering <laughs> around it. Anyway, that kid who was doing that, I then went back a couple of years later, and he was like the best striker yeah. ever. Some people just click, didn't they? Yeah, just click. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, we're lucky. The team that I look after, the boys have been playing together since they were two and a bit. Mm. 
So they all know each other very well. They don't. Some of them go to the same school, but there's I think like four, four in one class. The rest of them are different schools. But because they've been with each other since two, two and a half, they all get on very well. It's, we're quite lucky in the sense of there's no annoying parents, which makes a big difference. Um, That's the worst thing. The kids have all got a pretty good attitude. Um, they all want to do better. Um, until we lost for the first time last week, and that was interesting. And <laughs> they had a lot of tears. Uh, but then it's six-year-old football, isn't it? So, yeah. Okay. Real. Right. What else you want to talk about? Anything you want to tell people? Deals you got on? I know my son contacted you about an ISO. Is that something you do? It is something I do. Has he contacted you? Yet? I contacted him and left a message. Oh, he's a nightmare, isn't he? So a nightmare. I'll let you chase him up for me. Um, if we we basically, if you if you want to find out more, the easiest thing for me to do is to talk to someone. Um, it's there's so much to what we do. It's whether you've got, you want savings, whether you want um, long-term investments, whether you want to reduce your tax bills. There's so much to it that we can look at. That You basically do an assessment. Of it. Yeah. I, I, if I was to meet someone for the first time, which I'm, I'm doing tonight, I, I, don't, I go into it quite blind because I quite like that. I don't want to know a lot of the information beforehand, which can be a bit of a, a waste of time in some aspects because... Some people I can't help, but, um, but for the majority of people, there's an area that I can help them with, and it's helping them understand what they've got, what they can do to improve their situation. And until you sit down with someone, not many people have a financial plan. Not They don't really know what they want out of their finances now or in the future. And until you sit down with someone and actually sit down and say, look, where do you want to get to in 5, 10, 20 years' time? And then they start thinking about it. So, well, let's make that a reality mm. and, and do that. Um, I have a client that I saw a couple of days ago. He wants. He was thinking he was going to retire at 67. And my plan is to get him done by 60, um, which is achievable if we do X, Y, and Z. Mm. Um, and he's all on board for it because he's been using that to work for seven years longer than he thought he would have. So, yeah. Um, the father-in-law is a big example. He was working. We had a chat with him and... Gave up work. Perfect. Didn't need to work. So it's there's, there's some people are losing money if they're working. Sometimes aren't they? Yeah, yeah. It all depends on their situation. Some people work because they like working. Um, some people get scared of retirement because they don't really know what they're going to do. I've lost a lot of friends from retirement. Mm. You know, they just stop completely, and then the bo- and then the body stops. Yeah, you've, you've got you've got to keep going. You've got to have something that you're yeah. doing. Um, yeah, but Re- retirement shouldn't just mean stopping watching telly. You know? No. No, and and that's what I try and get people to think about. What do you actually want retirement to look like? Mm -hmm. Is it going on X amount of holidays a year? Is it doing volunteering? Is it doing part-time work? Is it doing UK breaks? Whatever it may be. Um, But until you sit down and work out what you want your perfect year to look like, you have no idea what that is going to cost you on an annual basis. And you may have the ability to do that now. You may not. You may have to work for X amount of years more. But it's understanding that and get to a point where you know it's achievable. I know when I first met you and you came around the house, I, I was pleasantly surprised by um, what you said, but then that war kicked in and probably pushed it back a few years. But, um, yeah, and, and, and it's <clears throat> looking at your situation and understanding what you've got available to you now and what you've got available to you at retirement age, and then you've got state pensions. All of that is a pretty positive outlook. And, mm-hmm. and most people will have the same sort of situation it's just that they don't realise it and if you do X, Y and Z you can make it so much better um, and if I ask someone what do you want from retirement and do you want 10 grand a year they'll probably say no because you're not going to be able to do a lot with that mm. um, if you want 25 grand a year you need roughly half a million in a pension pot so there's all of this stuff that you may or may not know and until you sit down and go through it it's, it's difficult to understand mm. perfect well, like I said, Mike, I don't like praising you out often, but <laughs> I know if I've got questions financially, you're just at the end of the phone for me. So I thank you for that. Yeah. And, and that's something that we kind of pride ourselves on. We I see my clients pretty much every six to nine months um, mm. and things will change in their situation. Things will change in outside situation. Um, and it's just keeping on top of their situation as best as we possibly can. Um, and if you need me, you can give me a call or... We've got an admin team that's got 
nine people in it so you can give them a call. And I can also sense you're putting your head in your hands when I ask you a really stupid financial question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a little chuckle. <laughs> It's like, where are we going again? Yeah. <laughs> I told him this five times already. No, you can't do that. Right. So, how are people going to find you? What, where do they go? Um, well, I, I don't, I have a website. Um, but like I said, I don't do any marketing. So, there's not a lot on there. Um, well, then you're really selling yourself like, here. Well, well I know. But if you, well, for your email address, uh, yeah, mike.harper at sjpp.co.uk. That's probably the easiest way to contact me. Okay. Say it slower just in case. I like, I'd make it appear somewhere. Yeah. Mike.harper at sjpp.co.uk. Yeah. Okay, good. Because when I read mine out, I read it in two different ways. So it was really bad. <laughs> okay, thanks, mate. Oh, thanks. So, um, Hopefully I've won that competition. I think you have won it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I've, like I say, I've changed it now. So it, we've now got cherrywoodpro.com forward slash podcast. And uh, yeah, you should be able to see the podcast on there on by YouTube and then we'll post them on the usual podcast or you'll be able to hear them on the usual stuff like Spotify and whatever. I don't really actually know. I just use a program that does it for me. I look forward to listening to myself again. That'd be great. Oh, you love you love that, don't you? You probably <laughs> played a wedding video all the time. You probably listen to your speech every week. I have listened to my speech a few times, but one section of it and that's just when I crack the joke. That's... <laughs> Do you remember the joke? Well, there was loads. Well, if I showed you on Big Spice. Yeah, I do remember. I just, I've, I've listened to that. It just makes me laugh. It makes me laugh. But yeah, I, I must admit, I put mine on every now and then. I think my my speech is on YouTube, and I said something like, "I remember when I, I, I first met I first met my wife. I remember thinking to myself, you 'You've got no chance.' And then, but eventually, she you know she she won me around, and I agreed to go out with her. Something like that. <laughs> I said. Yeah, we had um, obviously Spencer doing um, his bit. The magic. Yeah, I might get Spencer in. I've got another magician coming in yeah. at some point. Yeah. But he, um, we asked him to do a forfeit and he said, oh, I can't do that. There's kids involved. And I said, you don't know what I'm saying in my speech. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll be yeah. fine. And no, that was good. That was funny. And it worked perfectly. It was, when when yeah. your mate opened his hand up and that um, that ball that turned into a knob came out. Yeah, it, it couldn't. It, 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 it couldn't have got better. No, perfect. It couldn't have got better because he was saying there's not one of them in my hand and stuff, and it was yeah, it was just brilliant. It was, it was really good. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you. Mate. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. Okay, it's funny when Rach is here because then I I would slag her off at the same time and <laughs> say I rubbed her ears and things, but um, unfortunately she can't be here all the time. Before. And there might be a time when I can't be here. It's just not worth doing then, though, is it? Probably not, mate, no. Probably not. Brilliant. That'll do. Turn it off. Cut. Done. There we go.